Good morning and welcome to St. Stephen's Episcopal Church on this Sunday, August 1st. It's the 10th Sunday after Pentecost. Our service begins on the first page of the bulletin. Please stand as you are able. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be the Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Let your continual mercy, O Lord, cleanse and defend your church. And because it cannot continue in safety without your help, protect and govern it always by your goodness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the lessons. A reading from the book of Exodus. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, if only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way I will test them, whether they will follow my instruction or not. Then Moses said to Aaron, say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked toward the wilderness and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, at twilight you shall eat meat, and in the evening you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening, <clears throat> quails came up and covered the camp. And in the morning, there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, what is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, it is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
a reading from Paul's letter to the church in Ephesus. I, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called. With all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of God's gift. Therefore, it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive. He gave gifts to his people. When it says he ascended, what does it mean but that he had also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is the same one who ascended far above all the heavens so that he might fill all things. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full statue of Christ. We must no longer be children tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness and deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. On the next day, when the people who remained after the feeding of the 5,000 saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, very truly, I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, 
but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, What signs are you going to give us then so that we may see it and believe you? What works are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. A few years ago, after my grandmother had passed away, I helped my aunt clean out her old house. And as we were going through everything in my grandmother's kitchen, I found two whole drawers full of nothing but the bags that came around the loaves of bread from the grocery store that she had saved. They were all washed, they were nicely folded, and right next to them was the pressed out aluminum foil already to be reused. And I really didn't think much of them as I threw them away in the trash. And then I opened up some other drawers and I saw stacks upon stacks upon stacks of Tupperware. And she had more mason jars than I could count. I remarked that my grandmother had all these ways to save food, but she never really had any leftovers. Now, Sunday dinners after church were a big deal in my family. You went to church, you stopped, you picked up some dinner, you went over to Granny's house, like clockwork. But even then, she had always been so insistent that everyone finish everything on their plate. My sister and I could not get up from the table until we had finished all of our butter beans. And if there were any leftovers, she always sent that food home with us. So my aunt said, think about it, Victor. When did she grow up? She grew up in the Depression, and they saved everything. And while food wasn't too scarce for her and her family because of the garden and farm that they had, they always kind of lived on that edge. And they certainly knew folks who didn't have enough. So even all those years later, I saw that old habits died hard. She wanted to make sure that her loved ones were taken care of, that they wouldn't go hungry, that they knew they were loved. That's how she showed her love, making sure that we were fed, because she remembered a time when that would have been really scarce. So behind her, at least to my mind, strange habit of saving everything, there was something much, much deeper behind it. And I think both of our stories today challenge us to look deeper at what is underlying, what's going on. Because at first glance, for instance, the Israelites from today's story from Exodus, they look whiny. They look petty. After all, their exodus out of Egypt came with much rejoicing as they were freed from a land which had held them in captivity for generations. We all know that story. God sent ten plagues against their enemy, encouraging Pharaoh to let my people go. There's that whole parting of the Red Sea incident that finally allowed the Israelites to be free from the Egyptian chariots that were chasing them down. So there's lots to celebrate. 
And the Israelites did the, just that. They celebrated. They sang praises of God. I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. Horse and rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my might, and he has become my salvation, they sang. But as is so often the case, those songs of praise quickly faded. The Israelites faced hardship after hardship as they, as they wander around in the desert. And they do what many of us do when things aren't going our way or when we become anxious about something that's out of our control. They start to complain about everything. But notice how this present discomfort, this lack of food, and their anxiety of not knowing where they're at or if God is truly with them. Notice how those distort their memories of the past. The Israelites begin to idealize their time in Egypt as a time when they, as enslaved persons, could sit by flesh pots, literally bowls of flesh, of meat, and they could eat their fill. That's probably not exactly how their time in Egypt unfolded. Because, in fact, Egypt was a place of abuse, a place of oppression, a place of enslavement. But they don't mention that. They only mention the bread and the meat. The selective distortion of Israel is that given all the anxiety they're facing over not having their basic needs met, the need for food overrides any long-term hope they have for freedom, for security, for well-being. There's so much more than just physical hunger going on here. It's more than just childish complaining. Underneath their physical hunger, they, their very real need for food, there are other hungers that aren't being met. They're wandering. They don't have any security. They're in a strange land that they've never been. Heck, they've never even been afraid before. All that's playing into it. As we see, as doctors so often tell us, the presenting issue always has deep underlying causes. And God knows this, of course. And God chooses to respond not with exasperation, but rather with compassion and love by providing manna, providing bread from heaven for the hungry Israelites to eat each day as they journey towards that promised land. That bountiful food given to them by God was exactly what they needed at the time they needed it the most. The fact that it shows up each and every day, just as God has promised will happen, that's going to address their deep anxiety with the good news of God's daily reliability. God is with us. So not only is that physical hunger taken care of, but also that need for security. For the Israelites, this is how God starts writing a new underlying story. You know, they were expecting death, or at the very least, at least a trip back to Egypt, back to slavery. But instead, God moves them forward and lavishes them in daily provision. God's action far exceeds their expectation, and the people of God can dream again. They can hope again. They can hope for those great things from a God who loves and cares for them, a God who is with them through their journey. Now, of course, later, the Israelites are going to forget all that, and they're going to complain again. This time, they're going to complain about the manna itself. This isn't what we want to eat. And again, we'll see those deep hungers, those anxieties that are, that are much deeper than just a rumbling belly coming into play. That's a story for another day. But I think, in a lot of ways, the crowd that has gathered around Jesus in our, in our gospel reading is a lot like those ancient Israelites from Exodus. They've just seen Jesus feed a crowd of 5,000 people with just five loaves of bread, with just two small fish. After seeing this sign, they want to take Jesus by force, and they want to make Jesus king. Jesus knows that's not what he's called to, so he leaves with his disciples to go to the other side of the lake. And then the crowd is so desperate to get back to Jesus, they get in a boat themselves, and they follow him, and they find him. And we see that the crowd is still 
so hung up on the physical manifestation, on the bread that satisfies their hunger, that they ask for another sign. Do that again for us, Jesus. But this gave Jesus the opportunity to explain what they had experienced to them. The sign isn't about having a good meal. The sign is all about who Jesus is. So the crowd saw the feeding miracle as an end into itself. It's a chance for them to fill their bellies with food that they needed. But it's more than that. It's more than just a snack. So Jesus invites the crowd to probe the hungers beneath their hunger, as one author wrote. Of course they're hungry. Just like the ancient Israelites in Exodus, they're hungry for real bread to feed their empty stomachs. They need sustenance. And Jesus gives it to them. But he doesn't stop there. He asks what it is that makes them seek him out continually. What makes you get into a boat and go across the Sea of Galilee, a body of water that you are afraid of, a body of water that stands for chaos? What makes you get in a boat and seek me out? It's more than just bread. For the ancient Israelites, it was that anxiety of losing the freedom that they had just gained. It's a need for security and a need for well-being as they're wandering around. So what are our hungers? What is our hunger beneath our hunger? Is it a sense, trying to find a sense of purpose and belonging? Is it a need for love and acceptance? Is it a deeper connection? Is it a need for fulfillment? relationship, growth, a sense of peace, a sense of calm. I can go on and on, and it would be a different answer for each and every one of us sitting here. But we all have those deep hungers. And it's one thing for us to name those hungers for ourselves, but it's quite another to trust that Jesus Christ, who said, I am the bread of life, will actually satisfy them. And we're pretty good at trying to find other things that we think will satisfy us. Money, accolades, the thought of our own self-reliant, the thought that I can do it all by myself, focusing on our own pride, all sorts of distractions where we focus on those things rather than what drives us, what makes us truly hungry. And we don't always recognize our need for this bread of life. And not just on Sundays, but every minute of every single day. But that need for the bread of life, that's also why we're here in church or watching on our live stream, right? We want to taste and see that the Lord is good. We're here in the hope that we will be drawn into the nearer presence of the risen Christ and be able to trust that it is Christ alone who can satisfy those deep hungers. One author wrote, the ultimate provision of the triune God is that the Father sends the Son in order that humanity may experience the fullness of God. Jesus Christ is the bread of life, the true manna which comes down from above. He is the ultimate provision for human beings in life and in death. God in Christ is the comfort we need to walk in faithfulness while journeying on earth, and he is the gift that ensures that we will live eternally with God. And God's sustaining goodness is never ending. God gives us grace to strengthen us in the midst of our trials and tribulations. And God gives us gratitude to appreciate the blessings that we have received. God, through the Holy Spirit, empowers us to believe in and nourish us as we bring about the kingdom of God in our daily lives. So the bread of life is there for us. Christ is there for us. Are we hungry for him? May we feast of this food. May we be nourished by this bread of heaven. And may we be changed to be more like him.
。阿门。Let us stand and profess our faith in the words of the Nicene. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please kneel as you are able for the prayers of the people. Gracious and generous God, in Christ you have given us the true bread from heaven which gives life to the world. Hear us as we call upon you, and give us all that we need to lead a life worthy of the calling to which we have been called. As we say, create in us a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within us. Be Beloved and kind God, you have given the church gifts as apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, build up the body of Christ until all of us come to maturity to the measure of the full statue of Christ. Create in us a clean heart, O God. And renew our right spirit within us. Just and compassionate one, raise up for us prophets like Nathan to speak truth to power when those in authority abuse the weak or act unjustly. Create in us a clean heart, O God. And renew a right spirit within us. Merciful and powerful one, look upon all who suffer throughout the world and spread such humility, gentleness, and patience throughout humanity, that we may bear with one another in love, bringing food to the hungry and drink to the thirsty. Create in us clean heart, O God. And renew a right spirit within us. Amenable and bounteous one, open our eyes in this community to see the abundant gifts you have given us, so that everyone may turn away from our efforts to gain those things that perish and work instead for the food that endures for eternal life. Create in us a clean heart, O God. And renew a right spirit within us. Loving and healing God, we offer to your generous hand everyone for whom we pray especially the Hill family, Beth Nelson, the Anai family, the Versus family, Howard and Donna Graves, Marty Shakokas, Leanna Mayer, Jenny, Jeannie Sinefani Jensen, Tony Hofford, Wayne Lockhart and the Lockhart family, Phil Hoagie, Eloise Hendrickson, Mary and Scott Vining, Loretta March, Leonard Tabor, May, the Alleman family, George, Buddy, Michelle Tur Tower, Samantha, Larry, Evelyn Ellis, Colleen Larson, 
Bill and Carolyn, Darlene, Austin, Sally, Ernie Curls, and those we, we name with our lips are in our hearts. <clears throat> those who have been deployed and put in harm's way to defend our country, especially Nicholas Van Wagner. For those who work for the safety of the communities, of our communities and the security of our country. We bring our words of grateful thanksgiving, especially for those in the fellowship of the faith in our diocese. Church of the Redeemer Baltimore, Church of the Resurrection Baltimore, and the Slate Project Baltimore. And in our Anglican cycle of prayer, our companion diocese of Puerto Rico, and the Church of the Providence of Southeast Asia. May all who have died feast with Christ, the bread of life, at the banquet table of your eternal life. We remember especially Mimi Gailey and Tony Dingbong, for whom the flowers and the chancel are offered by his wife, Tommy Lee. Create in us a clean heart, O God. And renew a right spirit within us. In Christ you have called us to the one hope of our calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Feed us with your spirit, O Father, that we may build up your creation in love and grow up in every way into him, who is our head, Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand as you are able. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. God's peace. God's peace to all who are watching on our live stream. Please be seated for just a few brief announcements. Normally we have a healing Eucharist every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Unfortunately, the diocese has scheduled a Zoom meeting this Wednesday at 10 a.m. So our healing Eucharist uh, will not be held this week, but we will pick it up again next week. Um, just as a reminder, not tomorrow, but a week from tomorrow on August 9th at 11 a.m., there will be a memorial service for Betsy Oliver. She passed away back in March of 2020, uh, and we, we could not have uh, a funeral for her at, uh, as a community, so the family would like to invite anyone who would like to attend to join them in celebrating Betsy's life. Um, on the 15th of August, we're going to be having our outdoor service at 5 p.m., and we're going to be having a bring your own uh, picnic celebration, a BYOE, bring your own everything. Um, of course, that is all weather permitting. You know, we have not been able to gather together as, as much as we would have liked. Uh, in the past year and a half, 18 months. Uh, so we want to take this time to kind of just reconnect, to enjoy fellowship with one another. Um, so we'll have our normal 8 o'clock service, right one, on the 15th, but then we will not have a 1030 service. We're going to invite everyone to join us at 5 p.m. at our outdoor altar here. Bring a chair, bring something to eat. We'll have tents set up. Uh, we'll have worship, and then we'll just gather and be together as a community. So I do hope that you'll be able to join us. Hopefully you'll be hearing from a vestry member soon. If you haven't, uh, if you have any questions, please ask them or, or give us a call at the office. Uh, we also have the bishop's schedule. 
has come out. Uh, Bishop Eloff will be with us on September 26th. So on that day, we'll only have one service at 1030. Uh, so please join us for that. Uh, vestry members, uh, we really need all of you here, if at all possible. Um, we will have confirmations that day, but if anyone would need, needs to be or would like to be received into the Episcopal Church, or if you'd like to refer, reaffirm your baptismal vows, give me a call. Let me know, and we will make that happen as best we can. So please be with us on September 26th as well. Any other announcements this morning? We did, you may have noticed that we added uh, Howard and Donna Graves to our prayer list this morning. Howard suffered a stroke uh, yesterday, so please keep him in your prayers. I'm going to go see him immediately following this service, um, and I'll give you all any updates as soon as I have them. Any birthdays or anniversaries today? Okay. Let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave, oh, I'm sorry, do you have one? Oh, you have an anniversary. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Just checking out. <laughs> Let us pray. Oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray on your servant Santa and Rob as they begin another year together in marriage. Grant that they may continue to grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Which anniversary is this? Rob. Yes, Rob. <laughs> Congratulations to you both. And now walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
Our service continues with Eucharistic Prayer A, which can be found on page 361 if you're following along in a Book of Common Prayer. It can also be found in the bulletin. Please stand as you are able. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself, in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity constancy and peace, and at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you 
And feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. A prayer for spiritual communion for those who cannot be with us in person this morning. In union, O Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. I remember your death, Lord Christ. I proclaim your resurrection. I await your coming in glory. And since I cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, 
I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you, and you in me, in this life, and in the life to come. Amen. Let us all say our post-communion prayer together. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of Christ, and uh, excuse me, in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son Jesus Christ. And may the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia.